In Acts 17, we're going to read from verse 10. Acts 17, verse 10, he says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the Scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Now, uh, I believe the most important word uh, in that passage is the word therefore in verse 12. You know, that, uh, that these people in Berea, of course, and, and you recognize that that is, uh, is why that preachers and teachers have used that word in their ministry name. It's in my ministry name, Berean Bible Study. Uh, have used that name of, uh, to signify the fact that that's the manner in which we conduct our meetings is that people bring their Bibles and we search the Scriptures to see whether the things uh, are so and, and depend upon what God says and not upon uh, men uh, or private interpretations as Peter refers to. And so these people in Thessalonica uh, did so. They searched the Scriptures daily, the things that Paul said. And it says that therefore many of them believed. That is, they believed not because of Paul or his word, but because the Lord showed them in the Scriptures that the things that he said were true. And so um, we're going to continue along with that thought and search the Scriptures as to whether these things that we talked about in the last class are so. That is, are there, there things that we are to separate in the Word of God? Um, notice in Philippians 1, And let's read from verse 3. Philippians 1, verse 3. He says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making request with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now, you see, I don't believe that Paul is admonishing there when he refers to approving things that are excellent as comparing, you know, spiritual things versus things of the, in the natural world or, the, the th you know, the, the external things of the world as compared to with the spiritual things, but rather that there are spiritual things that are more ex excellent than other spiritual things uh, pertaining to, uh, to our being sincere and without offense. In fact, the word <laughs> things that he refers to, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it, he talks about that, that uh, the things that we teach are not, as, uh, uh, not according to the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. And we compare spiritual things with spiritual things, you see, and the Holy Ghost teaches by that means. So that in doing this, that we're to approve things that are excellent. In fact, I'll just go ahead and put that up there. He said uh, to approve uh, things that are excellent. Is that right? That you may approve things that are excellent. Uh, Go to Luke, get Luke chapter 12, and get 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians 15. 
Luke 12 and 1 Corinthians 15. Now in Luke 12, come down to the end of the chapter, down to verse 54. Luke 12, verse 54. It says, And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? And, you know, in my mind, I, I, I just almost wish that the Lord could, could say that verse, that verse 57 to the religious leaders of this world is why they cannot even of themselves judge what is right. In other words, why are there so many different denominations? Why does each denomination have its own favorite version you know, and it's, so they say, well, it's so that we can understand the book. That's not the reason. Because the only way to understand the book is to submit to the truth that it must be divided. There is no other way. There, the, we're talking about the key of knowledge. There is no knowledge without acknowledging that truth, you know. Well, otherwise, there, there is no knowledge of that. There's no, it's impossible to come into the knowledge of the truth. But so that's it's just an excuse because they won't acknowledge that fact. Therefore, we can't understand the book. Now we've got to, you, know, you see, that, that's not really the reason. There, it's 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 hypocrisy. Uh, they could judge what would be right if they would just acknowledge this truth. But the the real reason for hitting the the passage there is because of the word discern. That's in uh, verse fifty six. The Greek word that's translated to prove is that same word. To discern. In other words, you, you can't approve one thing over another if you can't discern, you know, discern the, the, the truth about it. Well, look in 1 Corinthians 15. In 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 39. First Corinthians fifteen thirty nine, he said, "All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies in bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars." For one star differeth from another star in glory. Well, that word "differed" differeth is that word that's trans again translated "excellent" there, so that if we <laughs> differeth or differ, you know, so that this verse really means to discern things that. Are I'm just going to put that down. If we're going to approve things that are excellent, we're going to be able to discern that things are different. And if we try to, if we say everything is the same, <laughs> we're just we're just denying the truth of the of the passage. You see, it just we're just rejecting light. It, 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 so, uh, what I want you to look at with me this evening, and it's just amazing how this is, that there's a, a, a continual testimony throughout Paul's epistles that the things that he had to say are different, that they, that they're not the same. That they're different than what came before, and as I'm saying, not not he's not saying that the doctrine that he was uh, committed that was committed unto him is different from Islam, which I doubt existed at the time, you know, or uh, whatever other kind of system there might be. It's not that. 
It's that, that there's other truth that this is different from. It's all truth, but it's not all the same truth to, to everyone at every time, you see. It's just, just discerning that there's certain things that are excellent where we're concerned. And, that, you know, this may be kind of elementary to some of you, but sometimes it's better to go over the elementary things. Um, go to Romans 15. And while you've got 1 Corinthians, or if you haven't let go of it yet, get chapter 3. Romans 15 and 1 Corinthians 3. Not too far apart there, actually. A couple pages. 1 Corinthians 15, I mean, Romans 15 is where we'll read to start with. And in fact, there's a good bit of this chapter we want to touch on here in Romans 15. And so we'll start from verse 1. Romans 15, verse 1. He says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy as it is written. For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Uh, I might want to go ahead and put uh, on the board. I don't remember just exactly how we la had it laid out in the last class, but if I so we begin with the New Testament Scriptures, you know, and those things that we have in Matthew through John, and we talked about the, the, uh, the gospel of the kingdom being the message that was preached there to the people of Israel. Uh, and uh, then, of course, they denied Christ before Pilate and called for his crucifixion. And of course the book of Acts has, has to do primarily with the, the preaching of repentance to Israel. And then we talked about how that the Lord appears unto Saul of Tarsus. He's saved on the road to Damascus. He is the first person to look back to the cross and trust in the work of Christ at Calvary, that Christ performed a, his work was a work of righteousness and that he righted our wrong. And so he's the first person to be justified by faith. In fact, that the, the thing about justification is one of the, it just amazes me. It, it, it is like the simplest uh, of truths, and and yet it's 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 just so easy to miss. It's it is what makes the gospel of Christ a mystery. It's what makes it mysterious to people today. That you mean that I can just believe in the work that Christ did on, at the cross, and I'm justified from all things. I'm cleared from every claim against me, cleared from any, any judgment, and I'm, I'm dead to the law. I know that I'm going to heaven. I know that I'm not going to hell. Uh, I'm, I'm a child of God. Uh, I mean, you can, it's like it just can't, they just can't believe that. It's too good to be true. <laughs> I have to admit that. It is too good to be true, but it is true. The love of God, I'm telling you, people just uh, they'll have no, no idea of His grace. But so we have that here in Romans to Philemon, of course, and all of this is, that's, as I say, that is the essence of the gospel of Christ. Uh, now, so, and as far as the gospel of the kingdom is concerned, especially in Matthew through John, what did Paul say about it? He was a minister of the circumcision. For the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. I, I, there's again, that's another truth. It, it isn't so much that that Christ is trying, or even even John or the twelve, trying to get Israel to uh, to receive the kingdom. As much as it, it's just a matter of Christ having to come and 
confirm the promises made unto the fathers because it really nothing can really come to pass until he's crucified. All of those things have to be fulfilled. But if we stay on that ground, we're on good ground. He's a minister of the circumcision. Israel, confirming the promises made unto the fathers. Now, come down to verse 15, Romans 15, verse 15. He says, Nevertheless, brethren, I've written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore, whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. Now isn't he emphasizing there that the, the things that he was given, he said the, the uh, I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, and I've strived to preach not where Christ was named, already. In other words, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Well, that, that's clear that there, there's a difference or else why would it matter to him? I mean, as why wouldn't he not say, well, I'm glad that we're all building on the same foundation and everything. We're all the same. We're all working for the same. He's emphasizing the fact that what he was given to do is different. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. And so, and that there was obviously another man's foundation that existed. You know, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians 3, we'll read from verse 9. He said, for we, for we are laborers together with God. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now see, I believe that for all intents and purposes, what he's referring to there, it has to do, some might say, well, that's the gospel of Christ. Well, you know, that's true. But as we're saying, I believe it has to do with the, the justification that is by that means. And I, you see, because I believe there's some people in the book of Acts when Paul's ministry began as he went into the synagogues. And you notice there in Romans 15 he referred to the gospel of God. That as he went into the synagogues and he would not begin by telling them that, oh, well, Christ died for your sins. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. He didn't begin that way. He began by showing out of the Old Testament Scriptures that Christ, whoever He is, when Christ comes, these are the things that will take place. He'll, he's going to suffer. Uh, he's going to be the first that will rise from the dead. Uh, you understand He would go take those Old Testament Scriptures that spoke of Christ, particularly out of Isaiah and so forth. The fact that He was born in Bethlehem, out of Micah, all this thing. So he would show those things, and in many cases he would take several weeks to do that. I mean, you find him in, the, I think it was Thessalonica when he first went there. Three Sabbath days reasoning with them out of the Scriptures that Christ must suffer, be the first that should rise from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, 
is Christ. And so you find in Acts 13, as he's preaching these things, the resurrection, and he says, Be it known unto you that through this man is preached the forgiveness of sins, and all that believe are justified from all things. And you search that passage there with a the magnifying glass, and you do not find that he, him telling them, even at that point, that Christ had died for them. He's telling them, if you'll believe on Him, God will justify you. Now, I, I mean, I believe that He meant what He said, and I believe that God meant what He said to those people, so that in that situation, as those people heard that truth, if they really did believe, they were justified. Well, the ones then that believed, He would separate and show them again how that in those same scriptures where he'd proved that Jesus was the Christ is the fact that those sufferings that he showed him in there was for on your behalf. It was so that God would provide him as a substitute and that in dying he died for your sins. You see, he would show that to the people who had already believed that he was the Christ. So that there is this foundation here, and I believe that's what it is. I believe that that foundation that he laid was that because uh, we're justified by the same means. Now the gospel of our salvation, as he refers to it, is not just that Jesus fulfilled the Old Test Jesus of Nazareth fulfilled the Old Testament scriptures and that he's the Christ, but that very truth that he proved that to them by that Christ died for our sins, you see. The gospel of the grace of God, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. There's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So you see, as we believe on Him, believing the gospel of the grace of God, we're justified by faith and built on that exact same foundation. It's not a different foundation. It's the same, you see. But there is no such foundation here. This other man's foundation is different. It, it has to do, you know, like what was it, uh, Matthew 16? Who do men say that I am? Well, so finally Peter said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the... I might... <laughs> Thou art the... In other words, that's there. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Upon this rock I'll build my church. It's a different foundation. See? And so, what do those people that confess that? What would they do? Well, you had to be baptized. Repent. Be, be baptized that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Uh, he that loveth me, keep my commandments. Sell everything. Have all things common. It's, it's, the doctrine is entirely different. And, and, you know, once you start seeing, getting a little discernment about that, it's not hard to see. It's, just, it's, a, it's different. It's a different foundation. Uh, look at... 1 Timothy and uh, you know what really is the puzzling thing to me about some people and I, 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 I might have told you this a different time before I can remember when I uh, was a, a man that was acquainted with uh, my family and first invited me to a, a Bible class and I began to see that these things you know gradually along and I mean it's just it's like this blew the top of my head off you know so I couldn't believe this is that you know how the because I've been wondering about this all my life how is it that there's things that just don't seem like they they, they mesh you know and so there was a, a friend of mine that had we'd gone to uh, college together lived up in Chattanooga and um, his parents were, were both in the Methodist organization. And so um, I began to tell him, trying to show him these things about Paul's ministry and whatever. And he said, oh, you know, you're just building a whole doctrine on one verse in the Bible. 
you know, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said, well, it's all just based on that one verse. But you see, that I hope you'll see by the time the class is over that you could take 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 out if it were not even in the Bible and there would still be this continual testimony throughout all of Paul's epistles that the things that he had to say were different. They are not the same. And he says, don't you, just, don't you see that things are different? Approve those things that are excellent. Choose those things. And so the thing that's so marvelous to consider how can this be sometimes why is it that there are people in the world that don't care? Why is it that they don't have that... Uh, why are they not troubled by the fact that these things are not the same? I mean, they can manage to vote and operate a car and pay their bills on time and maintain a bank account and they can do all these things and, and go to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday for years, and yet those things never trouble their conscience. They don't. And in fact, when you try to show them, they're all the same. Something wrong. Something, something's just not right there somewhere, you know. And uh, I rather suspect that it's all uh, eventually going to show, it's going to come out before God someday, whether at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne judgment, that every soul got what they wanted. You want to go to heaven? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You reject that? Well, I guess that's not what you wanted, was it? <laughs> God, you know, God's going to let men have what they want. You want to know the truth? Well, it's the way you can know it. You want something else? Well, reject that. And see, I believe that's the answer. We touched on, I don't know if it's, sorry if it was not this class, but we, the, about, you know, this Romans chapter 9, that God hardening Pharaoh's heart. I mean, you or anyone, reject the truth after being given the opportunity to receive it, then God does, he, he can turn around and harden you to that. And it's just because that's what you wanted. Uh, I, I believe there's, a, there's a, not just that God leaving men alone. I mean, it's not like, because Pharaoh you know, was told, well, let my, let my son go or I'll slay your son. And he had all these plagues that gradually, I'm sorry, I don't remember how many, seven or so, got worse and worse and worse and worse. And he continually gave him an opportunity, but he continually hardened his heart. And it's like that and see, it's not just, that, not just that he was left alone, but God himself hardened his heart. And not because he was predestinated to damnation, but because that was what, that's what he wanted. Pharaoh he himself, you know. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wandering way off from... Where, don't you go to Galatians? Oh, we didn't read here in 1 Timothy. Okay. I'm, I'm back on track now. First, First Timothy chapter 1, and he refers here to, this, to the glorious gospel, verse 11. He said, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first... Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Well, you see, if Paul was not 
uh, if, his, the, if his salvation and the ministry that God had for him was no different from what had come before, why was there any need for him to be a pattern of anything? Because the pattern, well, I mean, what was wrong with, with Peter, James, and John? Why, you see, they could not be a pattern for what God intended to do in justifying sinners by faith. I mean, they were a great pattern for people who were believers and doers and workers and endurers and, and all that out of a remnant of Israel who were chosen, you know, uh, and, and of a, in the covenants and, and so forth. But he wouldn't do for a pattern for people like us. No, no, it took, it took uh, one who would be an example of the exceeding mercy and grace of God. Someone who didn't deserve anything but, but wrath. And, of course, the other versions take out that phrase, in me first, you know, in, in verse 16. So he's a pattern. He, it's a, he start, God started over with another pattern. It's different. Well, go to Galatians 1. And get Romans 16. Galatians 1 and Romans 16. Now in Galatians 1, we'll read from verse 1. Galatians 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, Grace be to you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And just uh, briefly, if I can touch on this without getting into too much confusion, it, it sounds like Paul is saying there that, that you've been, uh, these Galatians had been moved into, unto another gospel which is not another. It sounds like he's contradicting himself. But it's not the same word in either case. It, it's basically saying, you know, that you can have. Uh, we'll just say a uh, little puppy dog. And you can have a Yorkshire Terrier and uh, a Golden Retriever. And, it, and the Golden Retriever is another dog. But it's not another of a different sort. It's just another dog. But if you have, if you, have a, a, you know, a cat or a turtle, that's another of another sort. And that's, the, that's what these words mean. It's like that in the first instance, verse 6 would be like him saying, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto a gospel of a different sort, which is not the same sort. It's like, it's not, he, I believe what he's saying there, you've, you've been moved not unto another gospel of the same sort. You've been moved onto one of a different sort entirely because what it is is one that's perverted, that has, they're all mixed up. So it's golden retriever versus turtle. <laughs> yeah, it's like saying, we're not, he said, you're not talking about Yorkshire Terrier and golden retriever, right? You're talking about dog and turtle. They're stiff, different. It's, it, it's like a, it's not the same, so it's a, it's a perverted, yeah, a, 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 an animal that's got a, a dog and a turtle that's all put. Is that what you said? Yeah. A genetic mix? Yeah. You don't want to be, <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, it, it's, it's an invention. It's, and, and it will, it doesn't produce anything for God. It's, you know. And so he, he goes on. Verse 8. He said, but though we are an angel from heaven 
preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So you see there again an emphasis on the fact that the gospel that he preached, he didn't receive it from men. I wasn't taught it. I received it by revelation of Jesus Christ. And I marvel that you've been removed from the grace that by that gospel unto one that's a perverted one. And you know, really, honestly, this is the, this is the gospel of Christendom. Not Christianity, but what's called Christendom. You know, the church system, the system in the world that goes, calls themselves by the name of Christ without salvation and without power, the power of the gospel. That, that is their, their gospel is this perverted version. And I mean, there's some, some of the denominations kind of make a better effort than others to try to stick with this one. Like the Church of Christ, for example. You know, they, they believe if you're not baptized, you're not saved. And they believe that, you know, that they try to they practice. But, of course, then they get to the Matthew, uh, Mark 16, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And that's, whoop, you know, it's, we cut this off right there. You know, no, no snake handling, no drinking poison, no, you know, none of that kind of thing. No speaking in tongues. And, uh, of course, then the, the Pentecostal, you know, they want the, all of that. But then they don't really believe that water saves you. And you can, uh, but they're also tr more truer to the case because if, you know, they could lose their salvation. And, but but they, they all make an effort in there somehow or another, but it always fails, you know. And, and ultimately what they have is that tur turtle dog, right? <laughs> They've got that, that, and it's just perverse. It's not, all it can do is blind. It, can, it can't save. Aren't you saying that really the, the two... The two Gospels are both from the Lord. Yes. Were pure in and of themselves. Amen. And yeah. when they got mixed together, that was a human invention. Yes. Yes. So yes, exactly. I guess right. leaven bread. Beg pardon? Leaven. Leaven? Oh, yeah. Eleven versus unleavened bread. Yeah, that's true. It became They leavened it and, uh, and it became spoiled. Yeah, exactly. Um... But uh, look in Romans 16. Verse 25. So he said, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. And of course, verse 25 is one of the three times that Paul uses that term, my gospel. And uh, so, and it... Uh, the one that he said he was taught, that he that was not, excuse me, not taught, but received by revelation of Jesus Christ, that the Lord showed him. Uh, and it was according to a mystery. Look in chapter 11. And in Romans 11... He says from verse 13. He said, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. So, he said, I magnify mine office. I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. And you know, after a while... It, this kind of thing, it falls in the same category as uh, the statements made by the Lord Himself in the sense that, you know, there are people, sometimes they will say, well, that, that Christ was a, 
Jesus Christ was a great teacher. You know, he's a great moral leader or whatever. But they don't believe that he was virgin born. They don't believe that he's the son of God. And so those statements don't match because he couldn't be a great teacher because he, he just lied if he's not the virgin born son of God, if he's not the uh, equal with God, the second person of the Godhead, uh, had the glory uh, with the Father before the world was, you know. He's not a, not a great teacher. Well, see, in a similar way, it, Paul is just an egomaniac if, what he's, if he's not telling... I mean, he, either he is what he says he is or he's not at all. If he's said, I'm the apostle to the Gentiles, the uh, gospel that I received by revelation of Jesus Christ, if any man preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. I mean, that... We would think... Well, somebody came around that kind of attitude today. We said, well, that person really full of himself. You know? And he went through a lot of trouble. He, 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 if God didn't come to him. He certainly he did. Follow everywhere he went and was taken. And his end. Absolutely. Uh, and so that he... Uh, he basically sealed his testimony by those things. Yeah, that... Uh, um, that he, he, in fact, was indeed who, who he said he was. I'm the apostle of the Gentiles. Um, look at 1 Corinthians 4. In 1 Corinthians 4. From verse 14, he says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, you know, I, I could say I might challenge you to think about that. I mean, you know, so, so we're going to have a speaker come to our church this uh, weekend, and he's going to remind us of Paul's ways. <laughs> so, oh no, we're supposed to be taught of Jesus' ways. And so, you know, how, it's sad in a way. People think, they, well, we're following Jesus. And they never stop to look and see what following Jesus entailed, you know. And they never stop to consider that if, if the Lord could send Moses to the people in Egypt, why could He not send Paul to you, you know? And so... Again, one of three times, be ye followers of me. So we have, uh, we have Paul uh, referring to the gospel that he was given is different. He said, I'm the pattern. He said, I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. He said, be ye followers of me. Uh, look at 2 Timothy. Take 2 Timothy 2. Just a few other things. 2 Timothy 2 and get Ephesians chapter 1. Second Timothy two verse fifteen Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And of course the word that's in Greek, rightly dividing, it has the idea of making a straight, smooth cut. It, it carries the idea of cutting. And you find that verse in the other versions, uh, uh, correctly handling, and a, a, a lot of different words that have nothing to do with cutting anything. 
or making any kind of separation, whatever. I mean, you can handle something without dividing it. You can handle something without making a cut, but you cannot do what he said here without rightly cutting, without making a straight, smooth cut, not curving out part of, you know, this or that. He, the book of Hebrews or the book of Acts or anything like that, you know, in terms of the doctrine. Uh, and as I say, even if the verse weren't there, we've already seen over and over that there are things that are different. Keep a finger there. And by the way, we're going to do what, you know, what he said to do, to compare spiritual things with spiritual. And he said that to, we're to rightly divide the word of truth. Well, in Ephesians two, uh, chapter 1, rather, Ephesians 1, verse 12, he said that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. So why should we rightly divide the word of truth? What, what, how to rightly divide it? What's, what's the word of truth anyway? He said it was the gospel of your salvation. And I've, uh, I've often thought about it like this, you know, where that, you know, uh, people aren't saved by hearing the doctrine of right division. Pe people are, uh, you know, uh, but, but it's like pulling a curtain back. It's like take, taking all of those things that, as we're talking about, so that are so confused in the churches and in the denominational system, and pulling this what belongs here away, and separating out what comes in the future, and pulling it away, so that, like he said in Second Corinthians chapter four, about the light, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ is should shine unto them. It's so that that truth might shine forth and see there plainly, you know, that there isn't anything for us to do. There isn't anything for us to offer that God has already offered His Son and that He's already provided uh, everything that needs to, be, needs to be provided. He proved that He was satisfied with what Christ did by raising Him from the dead. And, and so that we live in this time of the grace of God where God is absolutely willing. There's not a soul in the world where he's not, he, that He's not willing to justify right now. Count them righteous and clean the slate and clear them all, every claim against them. Call, and make them his child out of every. And it's not like, uh, you know, trying to build a church so that we can take back the government. It's out, taken out of every language in every nation and every race, one here, one there. It's about justifying individuals, you see. Individual men and women and children, whoever will believe, you know, in, in the Lord Jesus. It's the gospel of our salvation. That's why we rightly divide it. And then, of course, so that we'll know how to live once we're saved. It's like pulling that curtain back. Uh, and I'm not sure. I mean, only the Lord knows. But I, I've thought many times that if I had not been exposed to that teaching, I don't believe I would have ever trusted the Lord. I don't believe I would have ever had, uh, you know, uh, anything to do with the Bible, even though I'd been raised up hearing it, you know, and whatever. Uh, but it, it's just... It was confusion. But when that, I could see it, it's not confusion. The, the, the Lord meant just every word that He said. It's, a, it's, a, it's true. <laughs> there, it's the, the only truth that we're going to know anything about in this world. Go back to 2 Timothy. and put, There's just two or three things that He says in here, and we'll stop. We'll here, uh, I want you to go to chap uh, 1 Timothy first of all, and then we'll go back to 2 Timothy. But in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 this time. 1 Timothy 1, verse 1. Paul, 
an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father in Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, but rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. You see, there is a, there is a doctrine that accompanies the preaching of the, of the, the gospel of the kingdom. As we were saying, you know, about having to be baptized, to keep the commandments, uh, sell all things, have things common. All of the, there's a doctrine that's associated with that. But then, of course, there is that doctrine, which is in Romans through Philemon. So when he wrote to Timothy there, that he's, uh, see, he's emphasizing the fact, don't teach this doctrine for salvation. It's like he's, uh, it's for our admonition and our learning, but you're not to teach that for salvation for the people. This is the, salva this is the salvation, this is the doctrine, this is the walk, this is the uh, manner of life, our hope, and, uh, you know, where this doctrine is looking forward to the second coming of Christ. As we say, we're already, we look back to the cross, and by the way, are seated, already seated in heavenly places in Christ. Not the same doctrine. Go to 2 Timothy again. And he refers at the end of verse 10 to the gospel. Verse 11. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also... I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, if he's not to teach any other doctrine, and yet he's supposed to hold forth fast the form of sound words which he heard of Paul, then there must be another doctrine in the Bible. And of course there is. Go to chapter 2. And so he says from verse 7, and we'll, uh, we'll start with this. 2 Timothy 2 verse 7. He says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And uh, I think I mentioned in the class last time that there's like a promise, I believe, that's bound up in that passage that if we'll consider what Paul says, then we can have understanding everywhere else there in, in the Scripture. But to reject that, that uh, doctrine, to reject that division, is, go, uh, is like to reject the knowledge. And the, the last I thought, I'm going to ask you to turn there, but in, in 1 Corinthians 14, that he said there that, he said, If any man think himself to be spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Now, you know, so many people are so occupied with keeping His commandments in the sense of water baptism and this commandment and that com and yet they totally ignore the commandment to rightly divide the word of truth and to consider what I say and the things that I write unto you. I mean, as, as we're saying, how can that be, how can a person miss that? <laughs> because it's, I mean, it's just throughout Paul's epistles. The things are just different. So we're to approve things that, and they're excellent. She's more excellent for us. And we, so then discerning things that are different mean, and approve those things that are excellent. And then everything just falls into place. M amazing. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 I get sad. Because, <laughs> I'm, you know, I mean, the end of the road is a whole lot closer than the beginning of it. And there are things 
that I'm never, uh, I'm never going to get that are here to be got. <laughs> you know, and uh, and and why someone would want to to not have that that's puzzling to me. But anyway, uh, we'll stop there for this evening. I appreciate your patience in the class.